it's, it's lovely theme music too that we got on our channel. But uh, where are you, Jared Plain? I need Jared Plain to come give me some, uh, some theme music, jazz it up. Uh, if for no other reason than just to annoy Comer, that's, that's a good enough reason. I know, I know Jared and Comer have a little, little feud going on the internet, so hopefully I can get the, the jazzy hookup. Uh, tonight, we're going to go over an opening that was requested. Uh, it's been requested for, for months now. Uh, the last person I saw request this was uh, WarKid42. He's, he wants to see the Brayer, so we're going to go over the Rui Lopez tonight. Uh, it's already been requested by the only person in the audience here that we do a D4 opening um, next week. And uh, we're going to be going over the Brayer tonight. So we'll have a good look at the, the Rui Lopez. So after E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop B5, we get one of the, the oldest and most popular openings of all time. And uh, by far the main move here is uh, A6. So knight f6, the Berlin defense also is very popular, especially at the top level right now. And sort of the point of the Rey Lopez, you know, there's other options. You could also put your bishop on c4. That seems like a nice diagonal. But on b5, we have some certain pressure indirectly on the center because sometimes we're taking this knight and grabbing this pawn. However, due to some tricks we have, it's not an immediate threat. So for example, after a6, if we play the exchange variation, which is, uh, you know, it's a fine way to play. It's Danny Machuca recommended, so he likes to, to try this variation. And here, white should just castle. Um, and then black decides what he should do about his e-pawn. But let's go ahead and, and just make sure we remember this trick. Uh, what do we play here? Queen d4, forking the pawn at knight, which isn't very promising for white. So after the knight retreats, you can take the pawn, and you guys think there's only two legal moves, but I get another chance to make the, the joke that happened in our Knights tournament here, in our weekly Knights tournament. What move was played in that game? Castles. Castles. Yeah, so this, this was one of our games, and just for Ben Simon, he left the room, but we'll, he likes to hear it. Let's, let's crank it up a little bit. He likes to hear the illegal moves, uh, which was a very good move. And then, yeah, then rookie one came, next move, and, uh, and white win pretty quickly. Okay, so the more popular move is, is to block because you realize you're in check. But this isn't very good for white after some trades and bishop g4. Uh, black is, is ready to castle, for example, after rook e1 castles. Uh, maybe d3 is your best chance here, but uh, okay, most people play king to f1, and you, you can just take. And you can already see black has lots of activity, the better pawn structure, and this, I mean, this is just good for black. So this is not the right way to play the exchange variation. But uh, OK, that's not our, our main focus tonight. After a6, since OK, the real, there really is no threat to take the knight immediately. But hopefully in the future, if we uh, just keep our bishop on the same diagonal as the knight, it'll be a recurring theme. So we have to constantly, in the very first few moves here, always be calculating what happens if we take the knight. And uh, now we'll look at the main move, knight to f6, attacking the e-pawn. And here, there's sort of a decision that already needs to be made by white. And I think this applies a lot to tournament players. The main move here is to castle, which leads to sort of the, the most ambitious plans by white. But there's also the move d3, which is, is practical for tournament players because it, it cuts out so many possible variations that black can play. But that being said, it's not as ambitious as castling. Because in the main lines, normally we play c6, and we want to play d4 and get the big pawn center. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of players out there that just prefer the d3 move because it, OK, you cut out like so much theory, huge amount. And what's, your, what's the plan then? Because in the other line that you just mentioned, you mm -hmm. d4 break, right? The argument. And yeah, you still, will, you still will play for d4. You're just going to do it a little bit slower. The Ran, black, yeah. which is the main move, yeah. And then the knight to uh, a5, sorry. a5. OK. And this is a little bit premature because you're, you're dropping this pawn. OK. So um, there are sometimes some gambits where you can gambit your e-pawn. But in general, what happens is he waits until that pawn is protected. And now this is a real serious threat. Because if black gets to play knight to a5 and take the bishop, it's already been a strategic disaster for white. 
Uh, instead, whenever they are actually threatening to put their knight on a5, so whenever they protect their e-pawn, you want to be able to play the move c3. Um, that way, knight a5 doesn't have any real sting to it because you play bishop c2. And so here would just be sort of the, the main starting position for the d3 line, which will be kind of similar to tonight's lecture. So even if you're going to go back and you want to play d3 in these positions, uh, just, I mean, watching some of the lectures of the more popular lines also will give you some clues as to how you should still develop your pieces. And one day we might still play d4 here as white. And it's going to be a slow maneuvering game. Both sides have an equal share of the center. So it's nothing terribly special, but I think still I'd prefer white very, very slightly. Uh, and, and I mean, Carlson has played d3 before. He's played both moves. So you're in pretty good company either way. But tonight we're focused on the main move, which is to castle. OK. And now uh, bishop to e7. And in some lines, you can bring your bishop all the way out to c5, which sort of is sort of the natural thing when you're first starting. You're like, don't you want to get your bishop outside of the pawn chain? Now you're going to play d6, and the bishop is going to be trapped in. But that's actually fine. In these variations, normally it's white that's going to do a kingside attack. So bishop e7 keeps the bishop pretty close to home. And in the very early stages, it uh, lets us go into some lines where if we take here and white swings a rook over, we're shielding the e-file, so certain variations this helps us out. But now it's white's turn, and here he typically uh, defends his pawn with the move rook to e1. And that might also seem a little strange if you're unfamiliar with the position. I mean, why are you moving a rook? Shouldn't you get a knight out? Shouldn't you get your bishops out? But uh, he is waiting because he's going to do the Roy Lopez maneuver in the future. And the Roy Lopez is all about maneuvering, but what do I mean when I say the Roy Lopez maneuver? Okay, and that is what I'm talking about. But we're going to put a pawn on c3 in the future, like really soon. Um, because, you know, they're going to protect, they're going to play d6. And then, you know, they're going to do this and they're going to try to trap our bishop here. So if you put a knight on c3 sometimes, which seems like the most logical move, right? You put your knight in the most logical spot. It actually uh, does prevent you from saving your bishop in the future. So more common is to play c3 and either d3 or d4. And it is, you got to the right square, but normally yeah, you go through D2. Yeah, you read it once upon a time. Yeah, so that's the key maneuver that uh, you really need to know if you play the Roy Lopez. That just occurs in every single game. OK. So now the pawn is protected, which means white has a threat. White is threatening to take on C6 and then take on E5. That's the threat. So you got to do something about it. So black plays B5. And surprisingly, in the database, people have played moves other than, than this one. It's very strange. They, those games didn't last very long. Uh, and they weren't very high rated players either. But OK, so b5, it's a move that's both good and bad, just like every other move in chess. Uh, obviously, you get a lot of space on the queen side, which is very good. But the, the one downside is in the future, it'll be white that might be able to open the a file whenever he's good and ready. But OK, b5, it's, it's very typical in these lines. Nothing wrong with it. And now there's already a, a choice. You can play d6, which is what we're going to be looking at. It's the clo closed Ray Lopez. That's what we're looking at tonight. But I do want to mention the possibility of castling, which can lead to the martial gambit. So here, by not putting the pawn on d6, we're preserving the ability to play d5 in the future. And pretty soon, we should do the Marshall Gambit. I prepared it once, but then like, I guess we weren't filming or something. So I, I didn't show that, that lecture yet. But it's one I do intend to do in the future. So you know, request the Marshall Gambit, and maybe you'll get it. Um, and there's all sorts of anti-marshals, you know, A4, H3. But if you play C3, you do need to know all about this Gambit here. And the point is, you give up a pawn. Um, but black is intending to get lots of pressure. The bishop comes here, this bishop's here, this queen is here, this rook comes over. Let's draw as many scary arrows as we can. The pawn advances, this rook comes in. Let's draw as many scary arrows as possible. Uh, so black, you know, his, his goal is to get tons of pressure to, uh, you know, but for the pawn. So, and it is kind of nice because at the top level, it's, it's interesting to watch these games, you know, because they, 
they like to, some people like to grab pawns and prove that they they're a pawn up. So it's all about defense and attack and and balancing them both. So very exciting stuff. Uh, it'll be covered pretty soon. And uh, obviously, also in this variation, if in this position you play d6, you just transpose to uh, what we're doing now. But it's you know it's kind of kind of nice. You could be kind of bluffing, like oh maybe I'm maybe I'm playing the marshal, maybe I'm not. So if you like to bluff, you you can castle there. Um, but okay, so the main move is d6, either now or after castling. And now the e5 pawn is protected, so we want to make sure we understand what that means. It means we're going to go win that bishop. So hopefully you know what move we have to play here. The move c3, so after knight a5 we can just drop back. Okay, and after castles, we're, we're very close to uh, the main line here. And in this position, white's intention is to play the move d4. And then that's how he's going to get a slight advantage. He's going to have two pawns right in the center compared to black's one. He's going to have a little bit more space there. Uh, however, this is usually prefaced, prefaced with a move h3. And the reason is if you immediately play the move d4, which has been played by you know, very decent grandmasters, so it's not impossible, you do allow black some counterplay after bishop to g4. So you're threatening the piece that's protecting d4, so already you have to sort of do something about that tension in the center. So you can play bishop e3, d5 also is a close second. But OK, for example, after taking, um, which we'll look at. But I, I do like to blunder here. Usually I like to blunder in this position, uh, just to see if people are, are alert here. What would white play in this position? Uh, yeah, bishop d5, forking both the knights. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a good, uh, good blunder to know about. So instead, they take in the center. And after knight a5, there's two lines. I mean, the knight can go to c4. You can play c5. And in either case, white does get some counterplay. So or I'm sorry, black gets some counterplay, which uh, is one reason why they, they restrict this, in most cases, h3. And it's sort of a part, too, of the, the general spirit of the Roy Lopez. It is white. You know, wants a very, very slight advantage. He wants to squeeze. He wants to grind, and you know, you play h3, and then that just stops what they're trying to do. And you'll play d4 next move. So here, there's a major branch. Uh, we already looked at the Chigorin in the past, so that's been covered. But there's actually, I mean, there's so many moves here, uh, and hopefully we get to cover them all in the future. I mean, there's the Zaitsev. Uh, there's the carries. There's all sorts of moves. Like, like everything, everything is a move here. Um, but tonight we're going to be looking at the Brayer, which begins with this mysterious knight retreat, knight to b8. So here we have the the very starting point of what we can call the Brayer. Now, uh, why would you go there? I mean, you could go to a5, uh, gain a tempo on the bishop. But if you go back to b8, Black's point is after the move d4, he wants to play knight b to d7. And he's just solidifying uh, the center. He's got good control now. The knight is, is quite useful on d7. Uh, and he fulfilled his job on c6. So you maneuver the knight. And this is one of the just most solid and uh, safest ways to play the Rui Lopez. So it's very popular. And you know Carlson has played both sides of this a dozen times. So a very good way, very good safe way to play, um, no matter what your, your level is. And we'll discuss now the, uh, the basic themes here. White's plan is, OK, hopefully a little bit more obvious than Black's, because he, he's going to do the Roy Lopez maneuver. The knight is going to, whoop, it's not going that far. The knight's going to g3, where he's looking in at some of these light squares. Often there'll be sacrifices on f5. Uh, so that's sort of his plan. At some point, I guess we can, we can leave this on the board. At some point, he's going to play the move a4. Perhaps if all the pieces are out of the way, he can even double on the a file, which we'll kind of see today. And what is uh, Black's main plan? Well, one, for one thing, we're going to get some pressure on the center. And in anticipation of a knight going to g3, we're going to want to play the move g6, which completely restricts the knight. But it also means we need to kind of uh, maneuver our pieces. So it's a lot of slow, subtle maneuvers early on in these games. And if we're playing g6, we want to put our bishop on g7. So rook e8, you know, bishop f8, bishop g7, these sorts of moves. 
uh, should be played. OK. Uh, and we'll look at a game now. So this game, I like to show games that were played you know, very recently. This is a game that was played just in the US Chess Championship, so it's still very topical. And this is the game between Wesley So and Gata Komsky. And it was the very, very first round. And all three of the, the top players, the top 10 players in the world, they all started really well. They all won games pretty quickly, which is sort of surprising. I mean, you expect them to win lots of games, but they all won relatively easily. I mean, it's, they, they played a lot harder games going forward. And I mean, Gata had said too in the press conference, he's like, you know, I'm jet lagged. He just, he just played sort of a poor game. Uh, and I mean, Wesley just made it look easy. That's what he does. So they both continued with their normal maneuvers. The knight goes to d2, it's going to f1. And now, uh, you know, you, you're considering one of these two moves. Those are sort of the moves to consider. And the, the best option here is to play bishop to b7, a little bit of prophylaxis. If you don't know what that means, come tomorrow night. We'll have a, have a little lecture about it. Um, so you're preventing knight to f1 because you're attacking e4 twice. So white needs to find a way to protect it again, bishop c2. And now, after some normal maneuvers, we can see the, the standard position. And here we have sort of the starting position. Um, so the basic middle game plans have been accomplished by both players. And after g6, preventing the knight from infiltrating, the most common move here is a4. But that wasn't played in the game. Instead, in the game, it was bishop to g5, so we'll come right back to that. But after a4, we'll just show the main line. In this position, the move c5 is the most common. It makes a lot of sense. And just to illustrate one thing, and we'll see it a couple times tonight if you just play a general move, bishop g7, you know, it's just sort of a normal move. White has this interesting idea that uh, you should be aware of if you play this variation. And that is to play bishop to d3. And you attack the b pawn a second time to force black to play a move like c6. Which is very possible. It's a very solid way to play. And we'll even take a, a quick glimpse at a Carlson game where he played this rather voluntarily. And OK, we'll see Komsky played this tonight. But it is sort of annoying. And in general, you want to get your, your c pawn out if you want to achieve the typical Breyer structure which is this one. So you pull, we're going to be able to play c4, and that gives you an excellent square for your knight. Uh, and then you know, when you're on c5, you're also attacking e4 again. You're putting some pressure in the center. This is the typical way to play. And white generally plays bishop to g5, which provokes h6. White is eventually going to start an attack on the king side. So he's hoping to, pro uh, to provoke h6. If you don't play h6 immediately, then OK, we play queen to, to d2. And we can consider doubling our rooks and eventually opening up the a file. And this is possible. Black can allow this, but most people prevent it. And when the bishop drops back, they plunk their knight in. Just to go a little bit farther so we get a general idea of where the pieces are going in this opening, we attack the h pawn. And after it moves, uh, we can go right back into g5. OK, we break the pin. Uh, and now it moves like rook to a3, which you know, may surprise you if you're new to this variation. But it's very typical to double the rooks here. And it's kind of like the example we saw in the Approving Your, your Pieces lecture, where you, you double on a file before you take the pawn. So this is, is the main, main, main line. And the theory continues. It goes on forever and ever and ever. So. Uh, but I think this is a, a good place to, to stop and go back and look at the game here. So not the immediate a4, but bishop to g5, which is not nearly as popular. But based off this game, I think it's, it's a very reasonable way for white to play. So if you don't play h6, I play queen d2. Komsky decided to play h6. And now you need to retreat your bishop. If you go to e3, which seems like the most sensible square, black can take on d4. And then there's a discovered attack on your e pawn. So that would cost you a pawn. You could go back to c1, but then you're in the way of the rooks. So it's hard to double on the a file if your, your rook is blocked in by a bishop. So in the game, he went back to d2. OK.
and black just continued normally. And now a4. So again, the most popular move here is c5, which wasn't played in the game. And just to give you a, a general look, I mean, we achieved this structure again, and our knight goes here. And it's very solid. Both sides have their chances. You have a little bit more space on the queen side. They're going to think about attacking you similar to the way that we see in the main game. But in this position, Komsky decided to play the move c6. Quite solid, but a little passive. Uh, and OK, I think at this point, Wesley So, he was getting his little super grandmaster tingling in his fingers. OK, he's played one little you know, passive move a little inaccurately, even though it's, it's probably playable. So I mean, it's, I wouldn't say that this move you know, cost him the game, but things all of a sudden just immediately start going pretty bad here for black. White just goes in for an attack, and it just worked. <laughs> so Wesley, very strong attacker. And I mean, where, where's the attack? It doesn't look like you have anything. Look at all the pieces around the Black King. How are you going to get there? Well, he started by taking on b5. And after we took back, he took on a8. So he's distracting the queen away from the king side. And there's one square in particular you always want to be watching. And that's the square f5. White wants to put a knight there, even if it's a, a sacrifice. So he played knight to h4. And he's, he's thinking about sacrificing. He has these sort of ideas. One of the knights is going to jump here. The queen can go here. Uh, this is very, very common. And OK, so he decides, let's get the queen back. You remember this game? Yeah, the rook wanted those on d 6 Mm-hmm. All right, good. Yeah, we'll try not to spoil too much of it for the, for the good audience at home that haven't seen it. So very good. So I'll call on you when I need all the right answers, OK? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so the queen eyeballing the knight on h4. Now he attacks the h-pawn. And in the game, uh, he sort of miscalculated. He played queen to h7, which is not a very good move. Now, I mean, the attack is, is coming really quick, but it's based on a miscalculation. Instead, if you play a move like knight h7, for instance, so you're attacking my knight, you could go back to f3. But if I know Wesley, and I know him pretty well, because he was on our, our US Chess League team, and I was the TD for that for, for a couple of years. Uh, he was going to play knight to f5. <laughs> and all right, I mean, you probably better take it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm taking on h6, or I'm taking your bishop and then taking on h6. And if you take, what is going to happen is you're going to end up getting a couple, piece, a couple pawns here. You get two pawns for your piece. And you know something like this, and the king can go away. And white certainly has lots of compensation. Uh, I would prefer to be white here. It's, it's a lot easier. And the black king doesn't have shelter, but OK, it is, it is a piece. So black has you know, every right to think that he has a, a good chance of surviving here. So this perhaps would have been played. But in, ga in the game, the inferior king to h7. And what did Wesley do? <laughs> Knight f5. OK. So he took. Yeah, all right. Now we're on your h-pawn. And Komsky thought he had this defense, which is sort of typical in these attacking lines. Notice, too, I am attacking d6. And it's sort of typical. Uh, it would be a lot better if this knight were somewhere, <laughs> you know, either, either location over here where the rook would truly be able to swing over and protect everything on the sixth rank. But here now, we grab a pawn. So the, the very typical attack here, you get the two pawns for the piece, and a very nice knight on f5. And notice that taking with a bishop is impossible, because if bishop h6, queen h6, king g8, queen g7, checkmate. Uh, also, I'm just attacking your bishop, so you better protect it or move it. So he protects it. Now the bishop's protected. Uh, we are thinking now about taking on h6, because we've got the rook on e6 now. 
So, all right, I just go back. And, yeah. <laughs> okay, so he's he said, all right, do you want to trade? And this, he, uh, he just clearly miscalculated something here. So we'll, we'll pause for just a second. And one thing that should be mentioned is the possibility of this bishop. It may not look like it, but now d5 is a threat in a lot of these positions. And then, OK, if you take, my bishop just comes into the game. So I don't know what he was expecting here, but do you remember what was played in this game? Or can you figure it out? Bishop takes f6. This is what was played. And again, you can't take with either knight because of queen h6. So you can't take either way. You got to take either with the, the rook or the queen. And they're, they're both bad news for the similar reason. In the game, he took with the queen. And now what did white play? d5. d5. Excellent. So, uh, all right, he's, he's saying if you want to take, and the brave computer likes to take this. So if your computer, they take this, you know, even though this is, is like super scary, but it recognizes that it's lost. <laughs> so it wants you to like do this and allow this check and then you pick up the bishop on d5 and it's like, yeah, I know I'm lost, but that's, that's the best, uh, which is, is a really bad sign. In the game, okay, a, a human might not want to lose his, his stuff and he only, he just thought, you know, the knight would take the rook here, which, which was just a mistake because what did he play? It's already been... Yeah, g4. And I mean, and the threat is g5, removing the defender of the rook, and white will win material here. And there's just nothing that can be done about it. So, <laughs> brutal stuff. Uh, you just, this attack just sort of came straight out of nowhere. You know, you play one little wrong move, you play c6. You know, it also didn't help that his, his king went to h7. And it was really tough on him. You, if you've seen the video of him, he was, he was in pain. You know, he was very sad about this game. He just, when G4 happened, he, uh, I mean, he just said it was just a human in, in a lot of pain. So, very tough. You know, it was his first, first round. He got off to a slow start. He did okay, just a little bit uh, worse than, than you would expect from him in a normal tournament. He just, he didn't get off to a good start, but halfway through, he, he picked it up a little bit. He, he recovered some. Uh, okay, so that's the dream for white. <laughs> you, you're, you attack, you know, you win. But if you clicked on a Brayer lecture on the internet, you might want to know how to play it as black. That's possible. And there's no reason you know, not to show a game from black's point of view, so I'll flip the board around. And this is the game between Alexander Mista, who's a 2600 GM, versus Anish Giri. So this was played in the Qatar Masters in 2014. Uh, and we're going to see. In this game, it's just an example of a super grandmaster just outmaneuvering a regular grandmaster, only 2,600. Uh, so we'll get back to the Roy Lopez. We're looking at the A6 uh, lines, and we're looking at castles, bishop E7. And now that the uh, pawn is protected, we need to play B5. The bishop goes back. We can castle or play d6. d6 was chosen in the game. So I'm not even going to pretend like I'm playing the marshal. I'm, I'm playing the closed Ray Lopez. Uh, so I was threatening to you know, just go get your bishop with knight a5. Castles, h3. And your next move is, is obviously going to be d4. So knight to b8, the brayer. OK. d4, knight b to d7. And again, we have the, the typical starting point for this variation. White's going to maneuver his knight to g3. Black is going to first make him retreat his bishop. And then he's going to do his maneuver, which was played in the game. Um, so this was the game. We'll, we'll come right back to this. But it is worth noting here, too, there is this possible move, which is not as popular. But in the highest rated game in which the Brayer was played, the game was uh, Sergei Karyakin versus Magnus Carlsen from Norway 2013. And this position arose, so it's, it's worth just taking a quick glimpse at this game. We won't go over the whole thing. 
and yeah, this is yeah, this is where he in just a second he allowed you know White to play this variation with Bishop to d3, and he played c6. So again, more popular in this position is c5, and after you close the center, c4, and the knight goes to c5. But yeah, in the game, it was an interesting choice by uh, by Carlson in this position. He just played Bishop to f8. And okay, after this, he was a little passive. And what was kind of interesting about this tournament, it's Karyakin started with, you know, a wildly great start. He had like uh, three out of four or four out of five. You know, he, he started off really, really well in this tournament. And now you're playing Magnus, and you know, he achieved a very nice position. Rook c8 you know, wasn't the most common move. Uh, I know at the time all the commentators were like, yeah, oh, rook c8. <laughs> and, you know, he, instead, uh, g6 or queen c7 were the more popular moves. And you get such a position, and okay, really nice play by Sergey. And you got a position where he was just better. And what was funny too in the press conference is Carlson was in this position. He's like, yeah, if White just doesn't do anything, then it should be a really easy draw. But White is slightly better. He's having a fantastic tournament. Uh, he went for the win, and that cost him. So he got the better position. But at the end of the day, the big secret is be higher rated than your opponent. You know, it matters more than if you're, you're, you're better or worse. The trick is to be higher rated, OK? Which is what's going to happen in this game. Anish Giri, higher rated. <laughs> uh, so he wins. OK, so in this game, we'll look at the, the more normal move. This is still the, the main main line. And you go there, and I play g6. OK, now a4. Do you think Anish Giri played some, like bishop g7, allowing bishop d3? No, he played c5. So you play c5, and after they lock it up, you play c4. OK, so this is sort of a, a very typical game. It's just a model game of how you should play with the black pieces. And my, just my immediate regrouping, I'm putting my knight here, my bishop goes here. OK, I didn't know what I'm doing on the next couple moves here. So when the bishop goes to g5, if we don't play h6, then he'll play queen to d2. But as Geary shows, it is possible to allow this. OK, the queen goes to d2. White now is thinking about doubling on the a file. And in general, you put your bishop on e7, you know, threatening to move away and trade stuff. And white doesn't want to trade in these lines. So he moved his bishop out of the way. He doesn't want to trade because uh, he's going to launch an attack at some point, so he needs all of his pieces. Now, if this was a super, super grandmaster tournament, I would expect knight f8, and, and people in the audience already see what's coming, you know, and, and then draw. But, okay, Giri is 160-some points higher rated than his opponent at the time of this game. So after this, he decides, okay, I'll, I'll maneuver. And sometimes black is thinking about f5. f5 is on the agenda, as well as, I mean, occasionally white also wants to play f4, but I am thinking about playing f5. I might do it now. I might do it a little bit later. And here, white just uh, makes a big mistake, a5. And when you show this to the computer, it's like, yeah, 0, 0, 0, 0. But this is actually a, a pretty big strategic mistake, closing down the queen side. Much better was doubling on the A file and then opening the A file. But it's not easy. I mean, if you've, I mean, what, what could possibly be wrong here? And we're going to see it. We're going to see a, a 2700 just play super strong moves now. And this is a great planning exercise. You may want to pause your video at home. We'll let the audience decide. The pawn on A5 is actually quite weak. And then he's, he's going to take back the pawn. But we'll give you a chance. How would you reconfigure all of your pieces here? Which, if you play the Rui Lopez, you have to maneuver. So here's a, here's a good test. Mm -hmm. Which he did. Yeah, the knight went to b7, which means the bishop is going to c8. Uh, it's much better diagonal now that there's a pawn on d5. So that all happened. And then, yeah, he's attacking the pawn. So he played bishop c8. Okay, and he's going to double in anticipation of this. So that is one way to protect your pawn. 
And now, how else? Where else are you going to put your pieces so you can win that pawn? C5, yeah, I like C5. Knight C5, very good. Which okay, we'll we'll go we'll go this far. But now, what is the plan for Black? How how do you plan on rounding up this pawn? So somehow, yeah, move all these pieces around so your bishop is here. Yeah, I think like bishop is seven. He's got a different So in the game, he has the interesting idea of bishop d7 with the idea knight to a4. So yeah. So he blocks on the a file and then he can take the pawn. So that's going to happen. So it's very interesting maneuvering. These are the type of slow maneuvers you can get into when the center is closed. So Roy Lopez players kind of, you need, if you can outmaneuver your opponent, you can win lots of games. Okay, so he went back, which is typical. The knight might go to g4. He might play f4. After bishop to d7, he's ready to play knight to a4. And white dropped back his bishop. Now I think he was planning on, in some lines, dropping the bishop into b6 to protect the pawn. And we'll have a look at that when it happens. But here, he played a super grandmaster move. A move I don't think a lot of people would ever consider in this position. So you can pause your video, see if you can play like Geary here. I think almost everybody, you know, would just grab their knight, put it on a4. But a very nice move. Bishop to h4. Just, I, would, I just, you know, want to take your, your knight. And if you just completely pass, let me just make a, a wasted move. I mean, there's no reason to do that. What was the, what was the threat? F5. F5. Yeah, this is the positional threat. And if you take, I take your knight. And it's, it's worth, you know, considering to take this pawn, but it really shouldn't be enough. Uh, it's worth considering. You can either take the knight or you can play bishop h4, and it's a piece. Uh, but, the, you know, the computer's like, yeah, it's okay, but, but it's not very good. And the other option is to take here, and we take back with the bishop, and black is better. So, yeah, very, very interesting idea. And, you know, if you, you don't waste a move, let's, let's not waste a move here. He played knight to f3. Well, again, you've put the knight in the way, so now you can drop back. He stopped at f6 this time. And if you don't get your knights out of the way, it's, it's kind of hard for you to, like, go directly attack me. You know, somehow you need to like push your pawns is what he's going to try to do later on in the game. And I'm kind of surprised he didn't just play knight to h2 here again. <laughs> just to see, you want to repeat? That's, that's fine with me. And I'm sure Gary would have you know, tried something else. And I do like just how patient he was. Okay, the knight went back. We'll see some real, real patient play by Gary. He makes sure everything is right before he plays knight to a4. So I assume at, at home, everybody's trying to play knight a4 every move here, but, but just, just wait. The knight goes to e2. He's thinking about g4, knight g3. He has to do something aggressive over on the king side. OK, you're going to lose a pawn on the, the queen side. But maybe we can get an attack going. That's how you have to be thinking here as, as white. And another very, very strong, patient move, queen to c8. This is almost a threat. It almost works. But it's not a threat now, but it could be in some other situations. If you take immediately on h3, if we give black another move, well, it's hard to get a, a third attacker into the game, so it's, it doesn't work quite yet. But also on c8, we're protecting the c4 pawn. So we can imagine our knight going to a4, and the bishop takes. So we're going to have to double our pawns. But on c8, now we're protecting the c-pawn. So he's making sure everybody is, is working just right before we, we go in for that. And prophylactically, white went to h2. So we're going to play g4, knight g3, and OK, patience. g4. Now white's getting serious. So Gary gets serious. Now's the time. All right, so he took. He took back. And now a very interesting scenario. 
occurs. And he was waiting for G4. G4 makes this idea a little bit better for black. Uh, that's finally the time, and, and we're going to see why. Now, perhaps, OK, in the game, knight to g3 was played. Um, and briefly, we'll just mention that this also was a possibility the computer wanted to do, just sack the exchange. But yeah, I, I hate being a, a, an exchange down against Geary. I hate when that happens. So you could consider defending this way, but I think, I think Geary's pretty good when he's up in exchange. But the move that's most interesting is, well, what happens on a bishop to b6? You know, protect the pawn. Well, here there's actually a tactical possibility, but it might work out for white in the end. So there's a little counter tactic. What is the, the tactical move here in this position? Yeah, you can take the pawn. What's this about? As he said, queen c5, double attack. OK, and first, let's make a mistake, which is easier than finding the right move as white. <laughs> so first, let's make a mistake. OK, yeah, you attack my bishop, I move it. And I would like to go over this. You see this move, and you, you kind of instantly know black is winning. Because, <laughs> OK, minimum, I'm getting this knight back. But it is an interesting attack. It's, it's worth showing the finish here, just because it, it's, just a, it's a really pretty way that black can do in this position. So again, you may want to pause at home if you don't want me to spoil it, but I'm just going to give the, the answer away right here. Black could continue with a5. <laughs> the audience is confused. You take on d6. I play rook a6. And the rook, yeah, the rook is swinging over. So let's say you don't want to lose your piece. Fair enough. Now another shocker. Bishop takes g4, opening the h file. Uh, also threatening a knight, so we take g5. This is the idea. The rook swings over to h6. All right, we're not done yet. d6, shut you down. But I have two rooks, so things work out for me. And the threat of rook to h6 is terminal. You can you know, sack on g5 and then give your queen away. You know, when I play rook h6, that's possible, but OK, this is just winning. So uh, it was a very interesting attacking idea. Uh, I don't know. Perhaps he saw at least a little bit of it. I mean, if you just see this position, just seeing this position on the board and you think, oh, OK, I mean, he's at least getting his piece back. He's also taking an f2. You get a little scared. But uh, white actually has a move here that is fine. He can, he can save himself here, a little counter tactic. And I'm, uh, I'm going to give it away. So in this position, knight e to d4. One point is, if you take with your e pawn, I take back with my c pawn, and I'm protecting my bishop. If you take here, I can play, among other moves, knight to c6. And this is, this is quite reasonable. I think. You know, had it been a position like this, if this had arisen in the game, he would say, OK, this is sort of much better than my position was a moment ago. <laughs> the white king is, is obviously not as safe as the black king. But considering the way the game went, I'm sure he'd rather have <laughs> this middle game than the one that occurred in the game. So interesting counter tactic there. Uh, there was, I don't know if it was missed or if he saw it or not. But in the game, he played knight to g3 which is actually a mistake. Now we're just up a pawn. This is, this is just a pawn. OK, the rook comes over to the g file. You have to do something. You have to get an attack going. If you don't attack me, I mean, I'm just up a pawn. And I'm a niche geary, which helps. OK, All right, gain a tempo on the queen. Improve our pieces. And here he goes. Hopefully, we're looking at this, this f5 square. And there are a lot of ways black can go wrong in this position. But again, prophylaxis. We're anticipating a knight going to f5. And if we take back with our g pawn, he can open the g file. He can take back with his other knight. There's a lot of bad stuff that can happen. So he played king h8. 
I'm just getting off the G file. Now if you sack a knight, I can take and I have some more time to defend. So in the game he went here because he thinks he has a threat, but it doesn't work out for him. So queen f3. <laughs> queen f3, he thinks he has a threat, thinks he has a threat. Uh, yeah, what are they laughing at? Well, Danny walked in the room, so everybody's oh, laughing. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us, Danny. Uh, he thinks he has a threat here. So we see queen d8, similar to the, the Komsky game. Uh, we attack the knight on h4. And white thinks he's being tricky here. He thinks he's clever. He takes on f7, which is a blunder. He obviously must have seen this move. That's no surprise to anybody. But what did he think he had as a trick? It doesn't work, but what does he think the trick is? Yeah, knight takes g6. But this is just a piece. Um, and then the game didn't last much longer. Well, you're threatening d6. But OK, I, I don't know what he saw when he went in for this variation. And the best he can do here is queen to g5. But let's just show the finish. He went to e6 which is much worse, and his queen got trapped. So it seemed here like once he was down a pawn, he sort of you know, just went all in and went a little bit too nuts, and he lost immediately. So that's, that's what tends to happen at all sorts of levels. You know, When you're down just a little bit of material, you, you tend to freak out because it's you don't want to sit there all day, a pawn down. <laughs> Maybe he was a busy man. But just to show an example of what would happen if, uh, sorry, if we play uh, queen to g5. It also seems quite reasonable. But here we can do a combination of taking on g5 and taking on f2. The most pleasing, perhaps, is to take on f2 first. You can't take with the bishop because you need to protect your queen. So OK, say you block. Now hopefully the first move you calculate is rook takes rook check. So that I can shock you a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. And now we can take here. And we're up a piece. For example, we can attack your b pawn. You protect it. Bishop f8, just preventing bishop e7. And we're a piece up. So I mean, that was no better than trapping your queen. But, uh, but OK, here you could fight. But you know, at the, at the grandmaster level, this is, this is not much of a game anymore. So we saw two very interesting games. We saw a model attacking game by white. We saw a you know, model maneuvering game as black. So hopefully that uh, inspires you a little bit. Maybe you want to check out the Brayer. And uh, you know, if you liked it, hit, uh, hit like, share, subscribe. And uh, we'll get the, the last round in here of Monday Night Mayhem. So let's, get, let's do it.